Um, apologies beforehand. I didn't script anything out or really plan anything. Um, I had been asked to do a tutorial for getting Epic Games launcher games to work on Steam Deck. So I recorded the footage like two days ago, but I, I haven't bothered with actually doing a video. Um, so I'm just going to play the footage that I recorded and then try to describe what's going on. Uh, so obviously, obviously the first thing you need to do is download the um, Epic Games Launcher installer from their website, which is like epicgames.com. Um, I'm doing all this in desktop mode. You could do it in gaming mode, but I'm going to tell you right now, there is literally no reason to waste your time trying to do it that way. Even if you do um, have a, like a shortcut set up in your gaming mode for a web browser, it's just, it, it's not worth, <laughs> it's, it's not worth the effort. Just, you don't even need to plug in a keyboard, really. Um, I think actually in this video, I don't even have a keyboard plugged in. You can use the on-screen keyboard and the the touchpads, um, you know, as a mouse to, to do it from desktop mode. So first thing is obviously to boot into desktop mode. Go to your web browser. It doesn't matter what it is. Go to epicgames.com, I believe, again, is the address. Um Uh, let me verify. Now open Edge because everyone loves Edge. Yeah, EpicGames.com. So there should be a download link up here in the yep the upper right corner. Just download the the installer. It'll download an MSI installer wrapper. Um. It should prompt you where to save it, but it, otherwise it'll go to whatever your default is, which which I believe is just going to be home, deck, share, downloads. That's where all my stuff downloads to. Makes sense, right? Uh, so the... Where is my video? Okay. <laughs> so the first thing to do is going to be to go into to Steam in desktop mode. Add the actual Epic installer-1330.msi as a non-Steam application. And then you're going to have to go in to the search bar. Unless you, you don't like have anything in your Steam library, obviously, then it's a different story. Um, it may be easier for you to just find it. Um, but that's also based on, on your, your customization. So like on my Steam, for example, on my my main account, Renate, um, if I don't add everything to a collection I have named All Games, it actually doesn't show up at all in my library view. I don't know how I managed that. Um, I think at one point many years ago or, or whenever they introduced um, collections, which I guess was probably like four years ago. Um, I think at one point I like specifically made my own all games collection for some reason. And so by default, it doesn't add things to my library screen. And the only reason I know that is because I have a second Steam account with only like 30 games in it. And um, everything shows up on my main window as soon as I add the key or as soon as I buy it. I don't have to add it to a collection. So Anyway, the point being, um, find your wherever your Epic installer is that you added to Steam. Then you need to right-click on it and go to um, Properties. And then you'll get this, this tab. And again, you can access this in gaming mode too. The screen will look a little bit different, but it has the same options. So you go to Compatibility. Um, and the reason I'm skipping the shortcut tab for now and going to compatibility instead is because it's that's the easy part, the easier part first. Um, I think. Yeah, so we'll skip past all this. Well, no, okay. Oh, I think I think I didn't. Okay, so that makes sense because I, I didn't actually record that part, I guess, or I cut it off. So um, you want to go into compatibility. 
there's going to be a drop down uh, it'll, or a checkbox. It'll say force. Whatever uh, force program to mode in, in whatever. So after you check that, then you'll get a drop down box for proton. The top option is experimental. Uh, then the next one down is 7.0 dash two. I don't know that you really need to use experimental for anything. I, I use uh, Proton 7.0-2 for like everything so far, and it works fine. So after you do that, then you also need to go to the shortcut tab here. Uh, and this is the quote unquote hard part. So um, once you add an application as a non, as a uh, non, Steam application and you run it through Proton, it's going to create a folder in your Steam directory that basically mimics the uh, directory structure of Windows. But it does this individually for, for every single game, um, which is kind of a pain. But So you'll, you'll want to drill down into, uh, it's going to be like home slash deck dot steam in order to actually see this you have to go into your dolphin file explorer up here under open menu and one of the options will be a checkbox where it says view hidden files just like on windows but it's it's less of a pain to get to basically so after you view hidden files you'll be able to see this uh, dot steam folder anyway um, then go into deck slash dot steam slash steam slash steam apps slash compat data. And then you're, you're going to have one specific folder in compat data that has a really long number compared to the rest of them. Um, that's the, the folder that you're looking for. Mine is this three, four, 17, six, oh, six, one, five, four. Um, inside of that, there's going to be a, just a PFX folder. You go inside that and then it'll have a folder for drive C. Um, and then I kind of cut it off here, but you can see the rest of it on the next line. Program files x86 slash epic games slash launcher slash portal slash binaries slash win32. And then the the actual executable is going to be in that win32 folder. It's, it's actually going to be called epic games launcher.exe. Um, so the thing is, before you can really actually get it to work, uh, to take a step back, what we're doing here is we're reusing the same Steam shortcut that was used to actually install the Epic Games Launcher as the shortcut to the Epic Games Launcher by just modifying the target and the shortcut values in the uh, properties. That way you don't have to, and, and not just don't have to, I don't think you actually can. That way you don't have to try to add the uh, Epic Games Launcher itself as a non-Steam app through Steam because um, I think I, I cut that part of the video off, but um, I, I don't have my deck plugged in right now and I'm not going to because I'm lazy. Uh, the thing is, if you try to add anything inside of these fake Windows folders directly through Steam, Steam can't see those directories. So like it'll let you get as far as home slash deck. Um, probably even as far as compat data, but it, it literally won't show you the PFX folder. So you, you literally can't go into this binaries folder and add the exe itself. So anyway, back to the point. Um, what you want to do is just navigate to the Epic Games Launcher .exe in that binaries win32 folder right click it and then it's going to say copy file location on the context menu uh, just copy the file location and then when you first uh, when you first go to this target field the uh, whatever address is in there for the epic games installer is going to be in in, in quotations so um, just backspace whatever is in the quotations entirely and then paste your file location in between the quotation marks. Then uh, do the same thing for the start in field. 
But then I think you you have to actually type in epicgameslauncher.exe. Let's see what I do in the video. Because there is a point in here, I believe, where I forgot to put in quotation marks. Yeah, here it is right here. Yeah, so you got to add the quotation marks <laughs> on the, the beginning and end. Otherwise, it won't recognize what you're trying to do. Oh, okay. So I, I'm sorry. I probably should have just played the video while I was talking. Um, so you, both of your your target needs to be the Epic Games Launcher .exe in in quotation marks, and then the actual file location. You can just paste that into the the start in field. Uh, and then there you have it. The Epic Games Launcher runs as a non-Steam game with the Steam overlay applied to it. I may have to cut off part of this video here in a moment or put a black screen on it or something. Don't want people logging into my Epic Games account that has no payment method saved where I've never bought anything. <clears throat> Excuse me. It helps also to actually know your login. <laughs> As I recall, I, I had to look up. I had to look up my uh, username and then I had to actually reset my password. Because I honestly, until I made this video, I haven't logged into Epic Game Store in like months. Dude. You know what? Let's just skip ahead. Say, <laughs> now nah, I'm bad. Am I sorry? Am I sorry? I'm bad. What the fuck? Um. Okay. Cool. That's how you save editing by just lucky <laughs> clicking the seek bar. Uh, so we're in the Epic Store now. I'm going to install the game to test it out. That game is going to be, I think, Enter the Gungeon. I tried to pick like the smallest, like quickest game I could find just to test out. I was, I was like, uh, I don't really know what some of these games are. Okay, so we're installing Enter the Gungeon here. All right, now we're going to hook it up. Let's do it. I don't know what's going on with the resolution. Um, it there it goes. Okay, it looked better when I did this originally. I, I I've never played this game, so I have no idea like how to play. I'm pretty sure I was at work when I did this, so. I, that's why I wasn't recording commentary at the time. Um, so the cool thing is I do have the uh, Xbox One controller 
synced by Bluetooth right now. And you'll see here in a second, I'll just go straight into the game once it actually starts. But um, I didn't have to mess with anything. I, I didn't have to touch any controls, change any options. The uh, Xbox controller just worked right out of the box. I'm, I'm not saying it doesn't work that way if you just install the same game through Steam because I haven't tested it. But uh, it is, I mean, <laughs> that, that is the case with the Epic Games version. So that's all I know for now. Um, apparently this intro is really fucking long. Can we get to the game, please? I don't know why that's upside down. Yeah, so. Uh, this appears to be. Um, oh, well, yeah, I think I started out clicking with mouse because I didn't expect the controller to work. So, like, technically you could add an individual shortcut for every single Epic Games launcher game that you install. You would just have to do the same thing. Um, you would have to drill down into the, the Epic Games directory, uh, add a shortcut to, to something. It doesn't even matter what, really, through the Steam desktop client. Then edit the parameters and put in the... Uh, the start in location and the actual exe location. I would assume it would work that way. Uh, but I haven't tried. But I don't see why it wouldn't if the Epic Games launcher works that way. I mean, you may have to launch the Epic Games launcher first. I don't know that these games don't have DRM that requires the launcher. But I guess that's another thing I'll test. So, yeah. Um, there, I mean, there are other probably, I'm sure, better tutorials out there. Um, I, I actually read one on Rock, Paper, Shotgun when I was making this video, which is is a great tutorial. It's, it's text, though. It's all text and screenshots. Um, it, you know, so if you don't like that, there are video tutorials like mine. Uh, I could actually go through the process again on video, but I'm not going to. Because that's more attention than the Epic Games launcher deserves, honestly. So it works. Proof of concept. Okay. All right. Thanks, everybody.